Hey, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete over at DIY Auto School, and what we got is a pickup truck. Now, the pickup truck that we're going to look at should have had a bed replacement. The side of the bed should have been replaced. But the problem that we have is to replace this bedside, all of the stuff inside the bed would have to come out. And also, if you take a good look, right over there, this thing's got rhino liner in it. So for this bedside to be replaced that we're going to be looking at would be an extreme, extreme job. And this guy is not turning this into his insurance. He is actually paying cash for this. So you can kind of see basically that this is a work truck. But if you look at the truck, you can see that he really, really takes care of it and is proud to have this truck. So what we're looking at here is this bedside right here. This is the right-hand bedside. And what happened when he was backing out of a spot on a construction site, he rammed up into a tree and the tree crushed the bedside in in this area here. Once again, we're fixing this. It's not going to be perfect in any way whatsoever, but it will be fixed where the truck will look pretty much 90% normal. What this is about is if you look at the body lines here, you can see we got a lot of contours. And when I say we got a lot of contours going on, we got this sharp line here. We got another one right here. All right, we got this line here that comes down. We got this edge here that's rolled. And I mean, it just keeps going on and on. And then this one here actually comes down here and then fades to nothing as it goes around the corner. But what we're concentrating on is this piece right here where this corner actually is basically we need to make because this is where the original hit was right there and what happened is when it crushed that in we went ahead and pulled this out we bondoed it up that's right okay and you can see it's not really thick bondo you can see metal here see some there all right so the bondo isn't that thick but there's extensive body work done to it if you get my drift and what we got to do now, because this had a low spot in it, what we got to do now is we got to get this back in shape to the contour of what we're looking at right here. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. So when you're looking at a spot like this, the first thing that you're going to think of is you're going to take your hand block and you're going to start blocking that out to start forming it. But what's going to happen as you're blocking that, because the dent impact was right here and it crushed it and you had to straighten all that out, what's going to happen is you're going to start getting a little dip in it. So when you come over here and you look at it, you're going to see it's going to go straight like this and then it's going to have that dip and then go back straight. And we don't want that. So what we're going to do to find our contour and to get a nice straight line is we're going to go ahead and use this right here. We're going to take a roll of tape. We're going to draw us a line with the tape here, and we're going to draw us a line right here. And what that's going to do, it's going to give us a marker. It's going to give us a line that we'll be able to follow as we sand our contour back in shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here about eight inches past the dent and then I'm going to stretch the tape out if I can get it to stay on there because that's real important you got to have make sure that you got good tape and then I'm going to go past the dent about a foot just like that and then now what I've done is I've made myself a nice straight line that I can follow as I take my block to sand this out now once we get it sanded down up here and we get rid of all this unnecessary uh, Evercoat slash polyester filler bondo, then we'll put a piece of tape right here to make sure that we don't have a bow going like this. So before we do anything, let's go ahead and take our sander and we'll, get, we'll sand all this excess filler away from the vehicle. Now what I'm doing is if you notice, I'm just using the edge of the sander. I'm not sanding on this because this is done. All we're doing is we are actually leaning the block sander toward us, away from the vehicle, just to knock down 
the edge of the bundle that we're not going to use. Now, once we've done that, we'll go ahead and take our tape. We're going to go past the dent one more time, just like that. We're going to come over here. And then this little section that we're looking at right here, that's where we got to concentrate on. I want you to pay close attention right here when I wasn't using the tape. And if you look real close, without using the tape, you can see that I was digging in to this contour right here a little more than I wanted to. And as we follow the tape, you can see that it follows that corner. So if I would have kept sanding, I would have sanded way too much off. That's why I just wanted to clean this edge off right here, just so I can go ahead and get my piece of tape there to follow my contour. Now the grit sandpaper that I'm using on this, since this is a finished coat, is I am using uh, 80 grit sandpaper. I don't want to use 36. I want to start it out with 80 grit because this is actually our final coat. And what this is, this is Bondo filler mixed with polyester filler. All right, and what that does, it gives it that nice creamy feel where it'll all flow out. Since this is going to be our last coat, that's what I did, and we don't want to use anything uh, uh, more, any coarser sandpaper than 80 grit. So I'm going to take my sandpaper, I'm going to watch this line down here as I'm sanding, because when I sand, I don't want to go past this line. If I see that my sander is hitting that tape, then I'm going to have to lean my sander up a little bit. If I see that it's not hitting the tape, then I'll lean it down. And what I'll do is I'll get that precise angle that I need where I'm just barely touching that tape. And what that'll do, that'll give me the angle that I need so when I pull the tape off, we don't have that dip in there. So pay close attention as I sand. You're going to see that I'm going to find the angle that I need by using this tape line right here. Always remember your safety equipment, very important. Okay, if you look real close, you can see that I have now hit my tape line, and that's where I want to stop on my angle. I don't want to angle it anymore, because what's going to happen is I'll start cutting that tape line off, and we don't want that. So now that I've found my angle right here, what I'll do is I'll pull this piece of tape off, and then what I'll do is I'll concentrate on this sidewall here, the sidewall of this corner. this nice and smooth and feathered out, we're going to go ahead and add our tape back to our body line. We're going to go ahead and take our block, concentrating on the angle that we're going to use to get the contour we need. We're just going to go nice and slow. Once you see the tape starting to rip, that's where you want to stop. So I can see that we're still good over in this angle here, and I need to feather that out. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that. And I see that now what's happening is I'm starting to rip the tape, so I need to stop right there. And if you notice, there's dark spots in here, and what that's telling me is it's still low. Uh, 
right, before we go any further, I want to show you what I was talking about my, my Evercoat Bondo mix. And uh, what we got here, we got polyester filler here, we got Bondo over here, and we got our hardener here. By adding our polyester filler, our creamy filler, what that's going to do, that's going to give us a high-tech Bondo that we didn't pay $100 a gallon for. So we're going to mix all that together, and what that'll help, that's going to give us a nice creamy Bondo. It'll flow out. It'll be a nice finished surface, and it will sand really, really nice. When you're mixing up your Bondo, you want to make sure there's no streaks, no color differenti and anything. Everything must be the exact same uh, consistency and quantity of what you're doing. Before we apply our Bondo back to the vehicle, we're going to go ahead and put our tape line on here one more time. And the reason for that is, is when I put my filler on there, I'll be able to pull my tape off and it'll give me a nice crisp line on top and bottom. So we're going to take our filler and then we're just going to fill it in where the tape is. And if you notice, we had a dip there, so I got to bring it out farther on each end to make sure that I can feather it out. Uh, these type of contours, believe it or not, are very, very hard to work with. They're very hard to fix, and a lot of people can't get them right, and all they're doing is wasting their time doing nothing but wasting time. Now if you look at that, you can see that it's a more level system that we got going. And what we'll do, we'll let that dry thoroughly. We'll be back in about 30, 40 minutes to finish this baby out. All right, now that it's dry, what I'm going to do is if you look right here, this is what happens um, when you mix that polyester filler with your Bondo because it's such a fine, nice finish. It's going to build up on your sandpaper twice as fast. We're going to go ahead and take that off. And we're going to go ahead and put a brand new piece of paper on there. And I don't know if you noticed, but I'm using a nice, hard, flat block. I don't want to use a flex block on this. I want it to be nice and solid. So I'm going to take my block one more time, and I'm just going to keep sanding. And before we do that, I want to show you this. This is uh, something, I remember I told you I'm going to put the tape back on. I want you to pay attention to this. Now when you look at that, you can see that by pulling the tape off, it made a nice square edge for us. All right, now I'm not going to sand it without my tape, because my tape is my guideline. But I wanted to show you that when I put that tape on there, before I put the bond on, look how nice and square that came out. And it's also showing me where the line is that I need to keep. So I'm going to go ahead and take my tape, and I'm going to put it back on there. Now, if I wasn't showing you this, I would have left the tape on there, but I wanted to show you that just so you can see what's going on. And you always want to go about four or five inches past your dent on each side. And then I'm going to take my block. Now, something else you want to pay attention to, this is not a sharp square corner here. But to do this properly, we got to start out with that. And um, if you notice, these don't have any rounded corners. I'm going to show you how to take care of that in a minute. So we're going to go ahead and take our block. Now I'm just barely pushing. And what I'm doing is I'm using my filler as a guide coat. All right? And when I say that, if you look at that, you can see the dark edges right here, the dark spots in it. And what that's doing to me, that's telling me that this is a low spot in our area that we're sanding. So when I sand that, I just want to go really slow. I want to take my time, and I want to watch that tape line. I don't want to sand any of the tape off. Another thing I want to do is I want to concentrate on these edges because I want that to feather out. So we're going to sand a little bit more over on the edges than we are in the center for right now. And now you can see where it's feathering out. We don't have to worry about that. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to 
feather that edge out. And you can see what I'm talking about right there. See how it's nice and feathered? Nice and feathered. Now what we got to do is we got to work on that center section. I'm just going to sand it until it's all the same color. And if you get to a point where you're over sanding and it looks like if you sand any more you're going to lose your line, then there's only one option you got and that's to add more filler into the low spots. We're going to go ahead and sand a little bit more, see where it takes us, but if I go too far, then I'm going to have to mix up just a little bit more filler and then we'll let that dry and then do the final sanding once that's dry. Once again, I'm watching my tape line. I don't want to sand that tape. And I'm starting to get something going on here where it's starting to look level, but we still got a low spot in this area right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mix up just a little bit more filler. I'm going to fill this area here. I'm going to put a little bit more here. And I think when we come back, we'll be able to block this out and that body line will be perfect. All right, once again, what I did, I went ahead and changed my sandpaper out. Now you can see right here where I had to do just a little bit of filler and I feathered those edges out nice. I'm going to go ahead and leave this tape on here. The tape's still good. I haven't cut through the tape. And I had a little low spot back here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and work on that at the same time. But I'm going to take my uh, sanding block. Once again, nice hard block. Okay, it's a nice sturdy firm block. We're not using any flex blocks here. And then we're just going to lightly sand that. And all we're doing now, we're just sanding it to feather that out and make sure that the color is all the same where it's feathered around. All right, and at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and pull my tape off. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take my tape, because we want a nice crisp tape line And believe it or not, these edges are very hard to make. They're not as easy as you think. And that's why the tape method that we're using right here is a real helper. Just like that, we're gonna make sure it's nice and square. And now we're just gonna feather it out, watching our tape line down here. We don't wanna cut through that tape line. And now, you can see I got a nice edge, feels really good. I'm going to go ahead and get this right here. This had a little low spot in it. Just going to take my block and block it out. We're going to be real careful. We're not going to sand real hard. We're letting the block do all the work for us. And then there you go, just like that. What we'll do next, we're going to go ahead and remove our tape from the top. We're going to remove it from the bottom, just like this. I got a nice flat edge here. I got my nice squared off edge up here. And I notice right in this area where our major dent is, it looks a little bit wider. Now the reason for that is, is because it's out too far. So what I'll do is I'll take my big block here. Now I believe this is about a 12 incher. I'm going to take the 12 inch block or it might be 14 inch, and then I'm going to block this edge, and when I cut that down, it's going to make it skinnier, all right? So we're going to go ahead and cut that edge down. And now, by cutting that edge down, it skinnied it up. All right, we're not done yet. Just hang on. And this is all symmetrical geometric bodywork that we're doing here and the reason I'm saying that is because this you got to build up this you got to push in and, and it's all a game and most of what we're doing here is basically to be honest with you the main tool that we're using is our eyeball that's what we're using I'm sorry there's bondo dust on my lens <sighs> there I think I got it off 
So once we got our body line where we want it, we got the angle the proper way, we filled in that groove that was crushed in, we went ahead and re-blocked this out to bring this line back in to give us the same width all the way across. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to finish this edge off and then we're ready for primer. And what we're going to do to finish that off is I'm going to take a piece of 80 grit sandpaper, I went ahead and folded it in half, and now I'm going to go ahead and fold it one more time and watch what happens. You see how I left a, a round curve on it when I folded that? Alright, so I folded it twice and it left just the right curve to fit in this corner here to go ahead and round that off. So the way I'm going to do that, see how I'm holding my paper, you can see where I'm kind of holding it apart. And I'm not going to put a lot of pressure there, all the pressure that I use is going to be right here in this corner. And all we're doing is cleaning that corner out, that's it. We're just cleaning it out, rounding it up, and having everything mold together like it should. And you can see it's starting to really take shape now and give us that nice angle that we're looking for. If you can see what I'm saying. I'm trying to hold that paper just like that, and I'm just going to drag it across, see? That's all we're doing. We're just dragging it across. Just cleaning it up. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this edge right here the way that I want it. And the way that I'm going to do that, once again, I'm going to take my sandpaper, I'm going to roll it around that edge, and I'm going to make sure that I'm just sanding the sharp edge away from it. That's all I'm doing. Okay? I'm just getting rid of that sharp edge. I'm not rounding it off. I'm just molding it in to what the rest of the truck looks like. I'm letting the sandpaper do the work. Got some uh, excess Bondo right here. We're going to go ahead and feather that in, get rid of that. And I'm just lightly sanding. Now what we've done is we went ahead and created a nice clean body line. Once again, this is a temporary fix for the guy. He might leave it like this and trade his truck in, I don't know. But you saw what's in the bed and this shouldn't have been fixed this way, okay? This should not have been fixed this way to fix it properly. Um, what we would have done is we would have taken a uh, bedside and put it on but he was in a situation where he can't do that so this is the next best thing but is it perfect no it's not perfect my friend Pete because it's not a perfect world and if we were looking for perfect and and flawless mint condition stuff we would have went ahead and told the guy the only way I'm gonna fix it is put a bedside on it he understands the situation that when you do a job like this it's not gonna be perfect but the thing we did for this guy is we went that extra mile, we took our time, we used our tape, we did everything we could possibly to make it the best we could in the condition that it was. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. Um, we'll come back and look at this and see how it turned out once we get it painted. Give you a little end action on it, see what it looks like. But. Uh, you know, just detail. This is all in the detail, okay? All in the detail. We don't want to round that off too much. We're just blending it into what's already there. I got to get my DA sander out. I got to go ahead and feather the edges up around all my bodywork. Once I do that, I'll put it in primer, block sand it, paint it, and then we'll come back and look at the car and see what it looks like. Like I said, I can't guarantee it's going to be flawlessly perfect. It's going to look pretty damn good. I wish I would have showed it to you. Uh, when it was wrecked, you would not believe what I had to fix here. But, uh, yeah, that's the deal. I got to get back to sanding. Okay, so uh, we went ahead, used our tape. We went ahead and made a nice contour. You can look down this line here. You can see it came out really, really nice for what we had to work with. Once again, I just want to let everybody know that this bedside should have been replaced. All right, this thing was crushed in extremely bad. I went ahead and fixed the form because if you look right here, you can see uh, it would have been a real major nightmare to get rid of all this out of here. 
and uh, he said this is just his work truck, so that's life. Use your tape wisely, okay? Contour that out using your sand blocks by hand, and if you do it right and you take your time, it's going to come out really nice. I'm going to rate this repair right here, 1 out of 10, probably an 8, uh, due to the fact that it was completely totaled, crushed in, and I had to pull all this out. Um, but it really came out good for what you're looking at, and I'm, you know, happy that the customer will be happy, and we're going to get him back down the road, uh, probably tomorrow. He missed some wax. Wax is gone. We'll see you later. My friend Pete, your friend Pete over here at DIY Waddle School. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel, because that's really the support that I get, is if you hit that subscribe button. Um, go back into all my videos, make sure you watch those if you're planning on doing this for a living or you want to do it as a hobby or possibly you have your own cars to work on. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos not just on this channel here but also on channel My Friend Pete or SWRNC. That's SWRNC. So check out my videos, support My Friend Pete and, and be a supporter. Be a supporter. We got to go. For watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.